Hello, welcome to the fourth edition of our Lenten Reflections with Venerable Dr. Tunde Yusuf. This episode promises to be life-transforming and life-changing. Do enjoy. Welcome to today's devotion. It's been wonderful and for me it's been impactful. It's been a time of nourishment, of partaking in what the Lord has for us. And today, by God's grace, we'll, we'll be concluding on, uh, on, on, on Jesus' conversation with the Samaritan woman. And, and you will agree with me that it's, it's been a, it's a, it has been an interesting conversation. And, and, and this Samaritan woman uh, unpack a lot of things to us in her discussion with Jesus Christ. And, and if you have your Bible, let's read the concluding part of this conversation. Uh, John, the John Gospel, chapter 4, verse 39. John Gospel, we read from 39 to 45. 39 to 45. Many Samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony he told me all that i ever did so when the samaritans came to him they asked him to stay with them and he stayed there two days and many more believed because of his word they said to the woman it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. After the two days, he departed for Galilee. For Jesus himself had testified that a prophet has no honor in his own town so when he came to galilee the galileans welcomed him having seen all that he had done in jerusalem at the at the feast for they too had gone to the feast dearly beloved as we conclude this conversation between this woman and jesus christ you will agree with me that it's been a, a very wonderful conversation. And, 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 and the Bible says to us that this conversation between Jesus and this woman yielded a harvest. Yielded the harvest of the Samaritans. Those who are not Jews. Those who are not children of promise. From the time of Jesus... Jesus became the tool to gather the Gentiles and to bring the Gentiles to God. And we notice that the testimony of this woman was a powerful testimony. And what was that powerful testimony? Beloved, hope you know that it was not a miracle of healing. Neither was he that there was money in the bank account, no. The testimony was simple. This is the man who told me all that I have ever done. He is the one who told me my errors in life, my mistakes in life, and he has promised that he will put me back together. And this was the testimony that brought the Samaritans to Jesus. What is your testimony, beloved? What is your testimony? What people might be waiting for is your testimonies. Your testimony of God's deliverance. Your testimony of God's presence. Your testimony of how your present is, is, is indication, an indication of the powerful work of transformation that the Lord has done in your life. So this is... The testimony, the testimony that Jesus, the Son of God, has decided to put you back together 
again. And we notice as Jesus spoke, we notice that for there were many who came, the whole village, the whole people came to him. And they came and said to the woman, when they came, they said to her, this is in verse 40, he says, so when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed there two more days. They are asking, stay with us, Lord Jesus. And he stayed with them two more days. And Jesus is, Jesus is, 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 is extending a hand, a hand of invitation. And he's saying, come to me. And if you come to me, I will reside in you. I will be with you. I will guide you. I will protect you. I will uphold you. I will strengthen you. These are the promises of Jesus Christ. And, and what do we hear as a response here by the people? And he said, many more believed because of his word. So this time, they believe not because the woman had told them to believe. Not because of the testimony of the woman. I don't, the, the Lord does not desire that you have a second-hand Christianity. The Lord wants you to experience him. He wants to reside in your life. He wants to speak to you. He wants you to have a first-hand experience of his person, his personality, who he is and what he does. And the people heard him and they said to the woman, now they turned to the woman and said to her, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe. They said to him, for we have heard for ourselves. Beloved, have you heard for yourself? Don't just be a Christian because your parents are Christians. Don't just be a believer because your friends are believers. It is not a peer pressure thing. The, the, the salvation is not passed into the genes of a child by genetics. No, it's a believing thing. They believed because they had an encounter. Have you had an encounter with the Lord? The Lord desires to have an encounter with you. Stop running away from him. So they said to the woman, they said, look, we believe because we have listened to him and we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this indeed is the savior of the world. They had an understanding. Hallelujah. They have an understanding that this is indeed the savior of the world. Not because parents tell them so, not because friends tell them so, not because somebody tells them so, but because they listened. Their faith was strengthened. They listened to the word. As we open ourselves to the word of God, we become first-hand believers in the gospel. We're not second-hand, not third-hand. First-hand believers of the gospel. And listen to what they conclude. After that, they said to him, after the two days he had departed for Galilee, for Jesus himself testified that a prophet had no honor in his hometown. For some of us who have had the privilege of being brought up in Christian homes, we have allowed familiarity to weaken the bond of our relationship with him. We have allowed that our, our belief, our, our third hand belief because of the familiarity, because perhaps we grew up doing devotion, we grew up singing hymns, we grew up in Sunday school, so familiarity has set in. Verse 45, so when he came to Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him. Having seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the feast. Remember the feast, Jesus turned water into wine. So they believed in him because, and you see, you see two contrasts there. Some believed in him because of miracle, because of turning water into wine. But the Samaritans believed in him, the Galileans believed in him because they saw 
water turned into wine. But the Galileans, the, 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 the Samaritans believed in him because they had listened to Jesus. What is your reason for believing in Jesus Christ? You need to probe that. You need to probe your reason. And in that reason is the secret of your victory. Is the victory, is the, is the, is the secret of your victory in the faith. So dearly beloved, this is wonderful that Christ calls on me and on you to have faith, to have faith in him, to believe in him. And when we do, he says, you can do all things. The reason why we are limited where we are is that we are yet to believe in him. Believing on him means that you trust him for, for your everything in life. And once you trust him for your everything in life, you can be sure that when he had, when he, when he, when you entrust him with that, you can go to sleep and know that our Lord will take care of that which has been entrusted into his hand. God bless you for listening to today's broadcast because I believe, I believe that God is working out his purpose in your life. Only believe. Believe in him and things will change. God bless you. Join us tomorrow. Thank you for listening to today's episode of the Lenten Reflections. Join us tomorrow for another episode. God bless you.